G'day and welcome to another video with Better Pix. Uh, today uh, we're going to look at converting images from colour to black and white within Photoshop. Now this is probably one of the most popular things to do uh, with your images and it's super easy which is great. Uh, so previous video you would have seen me speak about the flexibility of working with uh, color images converting them into black and white in Adobe Camera Raw uh, because of the flexibility that you have with uh, um, uh, working with a raw file today uh, I'll be working with an image in Photoshop that I've uh, opened directly out of Adobe Camera Raw so you can see uh, the top left hand uh, corner there where the file name is the extension is .cr2 so this was shown on a Canon camera which uh, CR2 is the extension for uh, the, their raw files and uh, yeah I've simply opened it directly out of Adobe Camera Raw and into Photoshop. Uh, you can probably also tell that this is a scene that was shot in Venice uh, in Italy. A uh, bit of an overcast day so the light wasn't too harsh uh, so we haven't lost too much detail in the shadow or highlight areas which is great so it is a fairly easy image to work with which means we should get a, a pretty good result. So let's have a look at how we do it. So just on the uh, adjustments layer panel here, uh, if you're not seeing the adjustments layer panel, just head up to window and adjustments and make sure that that one's ticked. Uh, and as soon as you make it tick, then uh, you'll see that up here. And the one that we want to go to is right here. Uh, let's have a look, black and white. So very simply, we apply a black and white layer adjustment and you can see down the very bottom on our layers panel we have our background which is our image and the black and white layers panel uh, or the black and white adjustment layer just sitting above it there. As with any layer we can switch that layer on and off to get an idea of what the original image was like and we can also adjust the opacity so that the uh, adjustment layer is only affecting uh, the image below uh, at whatever percentage you set it at. Uh, so if we go to 0% then there's a nil effect uh, by that black and white adjustment layer. If we go to 50% then it's 50% uh, and so on. So we're going to go to 100% today because we do want to look at uh, working with the image as a black and white. Now you would have seen when I first hit that black and white adjustment layer that there was uh, a bunch of controls that popped up, a bunch of sliders. I'm just going to double click on that layer again and you can see that uh, uh, those adjustments have popped up. Now you can see there's red, yellow, green, cyan, blue and magenta and at the very top there's what's called the preset which is default. Now. If we just go to the top a little bit further, you can see that there's black and white and there's also an option for masks. Um, now we need to have the mask selected for that to be active uh, and that does give us a little bit of control with masks but generally any adjustment that I make with masks I do directly to the mask down in the layers panel. Back to the black and white uh, options where we have those different colors there. Let's start by having a look at the presets. Now, if we click on that, we can see that we've got a whole bunch of different options uh, around the starting point for uh, this black and white layers adjustment. And this kind of refers to the days where with black and white film, you would use different filters to get different effects. For example, a red filter would uh, make the sky go very dark, anything that was blue. So if we go down to there, you can see that it has changed the image somewhat. Now, we don't have a strong blue sky with this image, obviously, but, uh, but you can still see an effect that's being changed. Neutral density, uh, maximum white. Let's go up to green filter. So you can see that it's having different effects on different parts of the image. So, and you can also go down to custom where you can create uh, whatever you like. Or if you like, you can start with a uh, any one of those filters and then you can adjust uh, as you see fit depending on what you want to do. I'm going to start with the default and I'm going to make some adjustments uh, depending on what I would like to see happen uh, with this image. See I'm just adjusting the reds there, a little bit of yellow, it's just bringing up the uh, foreground or the, uh, the front uh, part of the buildings there. The green, just making that water a little bit brighter. Cyans, yeah, I kind of like the cyans where they are, but I'll just make it a little bit of adjustment there. Blues, not a huge effect, obviously being an overcast day. And magenta, just a little bit of the, uh, the buildings there as well. 
So you can see that uh, with that adjustment, uh, through those various color channels, you've got quite a bit of control over how the image looks. Uh, now, with this layer adjustment, you can then apply other layer adjustments if you like, if you want to uh, have an effect on the image. For example, uh, if you wanted to uh, darken the sky slightly, you can apply a curves adjustment, just darken the sky, and then obviously make some adjustments with the mask. Uh, removing that effect from the bottom part of the image um, which we have gone through before I have shown this in a previous video um, but there is still a lot of flexibility to work with images in uh, Adobe camera uh, sorry Photoshop not Adobe camera Raw, uh, and uh, Using layers is a great way to do that because it does allow you to um, select which part of the image uh, that adjustment has. On uh, uh, um, it does allow you to select which part of the image that adjustment has an effect, and to what amount. So you can slowly paint in the effect more, slowly remove the effect. Uh, so you do have full control over the image. Just remembering that uh, you don't necessarily have the full control of RAW, even though you are working with a CR2 file there, it does work a little bit differently within Photoshop. So that's a very quick and easy way to apply black and white uh, within um, Photoshop, simply through a layer adjustment. And again, looking at all of those various effects with the red, yellow, green, cyan, blue and magenta, um, uh, filters you can have an effect uh, or have some adjustment and control over how that layer adjustment um, uh, affects the image. Now I'm just going to get rid of those two and I'm going to go back to the original file so we'll just get rid of those two layer adjustments. Uh, the other way that you could convert your image to a black and white which I wouldn't necessarily do is to simply put a uh, hue saturation um, adjustment onto the image and remove all of the saturation. So saturation is obviously color intensity. So if you remove all of that color intensity, you're left with a, you guessed it, black and white image. Uh, now, this doesn't allow you to then have the same level of control uh, that we had on the previous, on the black and white specific layer adjustment. As you can see, uh, if I uh, just slide the hue back and forward, it's not actually gonna do anything. So that's not an effect or a way to make the adjustments that we saw uh, with the previous black and white specific adjustment layer. Now, this uh, layer adjustment, the hue saturation, does have a bunch of presets, but it's not really related to uh, um, specifics of black and white. It's it's more if you're working with a, a color image that you're trying to get uh, different effects. So as you can see, increased saturation, old style, uh, these will give different red boost, CPR, uh, this will give different effects but all under the assumption that uh, you're working with a color image. It's not really designed and so and a type of course with that blue, in intense blue uh, tone. Uh, so if we go back to default and then just remove our saturation, again, we've got a black and white image. So as I've said, it doesn't give you the same level of control, even though you're achieving basically the same outcome. If you're wanting to affect uh, the specifics of those uh, different color channels, so the red, the blue, the green that we saw earlier, you're not going to have that control short of going into specific parts of the image and making those adjustments, uh, whether it's brightness or contrast much much more work if you do it that way obviously so you need to consider that uh, you know the original uh, black and white adjustment layer that I uh, demonstrated earlier is definitely going to give you a lot more control and a much quicker workflow which is always a good thing so I'll just remove that hue saturation layer and we'll go back to black and white and we have that control again as you can see uh, much more specific control over those specific colors you can see, uh, for example, there's a lot of red here uh, in this part of the image. If I turn that black and white back on and I adjust the red, it's adjusting just those red areas. Now, for this image, obviously, it's a, the color's a little bit scattered in different areas of the image, 
But say, for example, if you were working with uh, somebody wearing a red piece of clothing or a car that's red or something that's more uh, significant within the image uh, or the subject of the image uh, is specific to a color channel, you've got those controls. Uh, so just a little bit of food for thought there that uh, the black and white adjustment layer is definitely uh, one very good option to go if you're converting your images to black and white within Photoshop. All right, thanks again for stopping by. I hope this video has been helpful as an option for changing color images to black and white within Photoshop. As always, there's a lot of different options on how you can do things. And my recommendation is always to test, test, and test a little bit more to find the process that you find works best for you. Uh, as always, questions are welcome and look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.